Welcome to The Girl Podcast. I'm Pastor Mike with New Hope Network. We're here to help you take your next step in your relationship with Jesus. I'm so glad you're with us today. What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to The Grow Podcast. My name is David. This is episode 82. I'm very excited that you're here. With me, as always, is Pastor Mike. Hello, Pastor Mike. Hello, David. You're yeah. excited? Everybody's here. We haven't... Yeah, everyone that's here. <laughs> on, you know, on the other side of the camera. Gotcha. You and Michael, I mean, you know, yeah. I've seen you all day long, Got so... <laughs> We haven't recorded one of these in a while. It's been a yeah. We'll see if we, we'll see if we remember how to yeah. how to podcast together. Do you remember how to podcast? No, no, yeah. Well, now you have to retrain me every it's been time. A good, we get it's been a good week. We'll see you guys on the next episode. We'll yeah. figure it out. Well, I, I believe in us. Okay. How was your yeah. everything? New Year's? You were traveling. You did some things. Was quite a bit of traveling. Spent some time with family. Spent some time with a lot of our staff. We had a conference <clears throat> together. Yep. Got to be in warmer weather for a while, which Sounds is terrible. always nice. Why would you not want to be? In I like to feel my toes. So it's nice to defrost. Thirty degree weather. <laughs> it's nice to defrost and make sure <clears throat> my all of my extremities still mm. have feeling once in a while. That does seem important. It does. Yeah, that was a good call. Yeah. Uh, the Vikings season is over since we last recorded. That's. I'm sorry. It's it's our lot in life as Vikings yeah. fans. Yeah. I'm not sure Pastor Jordan has recovered yet. No. He's masking his pain by pretending he no longer cares about football. And I'm <laughs> but little, he said that a year ago, too. I'm a little worried about him. He did just <laughs> say to me the other day that he's got more hope for this next year than he did last year. And oh, I thought good. he was going to give up last year. That's good. He kind of ended the year in a fetal position. <laughs> he's so young. Like, he hasn't I even experienced I think it was during this season we talked about it. He didn't really start watching until the Brett Favre season in 2009. Yeah. I was like, oh, you missed a whole lot of heartache, yeah. bud. <laughs> he hasn't gotten to where I've gotten yet, where I just don't watch anymore. Yeah. I look it up after the event. Yeah, that's what my dad does, too. So you, you won't truly experience the joy if they finally one day win unless you fully experience all the pain i'm i'm past all of that now so. you have you have like one have piece no of hope. glitter on your nose uh, and i really hope the camera's picking it up uh, if you don't normally join us on the grow podcast pastor mike was crafting i'm assuming <laughs> with our My children's wife pastor was d she was d christmasing the uh, williston building and i happened to give her a hug and you were trying to like yeah. stop her yeah <laughs> it, <laughs> how dare you take christmas down? it is a lot of fun because um uh, the playground that's in the uh, that's in the Williston building, kids will, you know, kids are around and they'll come out and look at her. What are you doing? She's I'm taking Christmas tree down, and they get angry with her. My daughter is not going to be happy on yeah. Sunday because, like, yeah. she'll tell you, like it, it's not Christmas. Christmas is over. But then I'll ask her, like, is it Christmas at church? She says yes, <laughs> and she gets so excited every yeah. Sunday. So I think the lights Matilda's and like the upset. trees are still there, but the Christmas decorations. Oh, are then now. I think she'll yeah, be fine. So. Then. Yeah, she'll it's be fine. still kind of wintry. Then now I'm ho hopefully some of the people that were there on the first mm -hmm. are um, are joining us on the Grow Podcast today. You were gone. Yes, but I believe I told you that I I threatened everybody uh, in the congregation. <laughs> That I was going to report back to you on who raised their hand and said they had already taken their Christmas stuff down. So yeah. I filed that list with Pastor Mike right. yesterday. Yeah, you'll, it'll come across your desk here in the next day or two. It's uh, got to be a biblical teaching. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, clearly uh, I did not, you know, I'm still on the Grow podcast with you, even though yeah. I threatened people in your name from stage. So that was good. <laughs> I think they all understood I was joking. I haven't gotten any letters you know, or texts that's good, yet. That's so. good. <laughs> Well, uh, we're still rolling in our series, yep. Great, greatest story ever told, Back into our it. big giant series, and we're in 23 and Me right now. Mm -hmm. Hattie still has not forgiven you that it's not about DNA. She's our very family upset. history. I, you know, upset. we could sort of say it's about family history because we're in the times of the kings. Sure. We're, yep. we're, not that we're walking through the lineage of the kings, yeah. but it's uh, when you read First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles, it's one king after another after mm -hmm. another. So I... By stretch, I feel, stretching, I feel we could like, yeah, probably I feel like that should that. get you enough credit with Hattie okay. to to cover it. Hattie, you, officially, you can no longer be upset. Twenty three and Me is about uh, family lineage. Yeah. Officially, but the ultimate kind of 
purpose of this series is we're looking at how these people did or did not learn to listen for God's mm-hmm. leadership. And if you've missed any of the, we've had our first three weeks of it now. Yep. So if you've missed any of those, go to our, you might already be on our YouTube channel, but <clears throat> go to the, the like Sunday services tab and yeah. you can see past all Pastor Mike's messages on there. So make sure you catch back up because we yeah. love that you're here on the Grow podcast, but uh, it's this is a supplemental podcast mm-hmm. to to that teaching, and so we want to make today sure especially hearing. so sure because this last week and if you're listening to it <clears throat> following the the week three of twenty three and me we uh, I took us a little bit more deep a little bit deeper I guess I mm-hmm. talk for a living I don't know how to do it. a little bit deeper <laughs> you mean you into, speak for a living yeah that too. <laughs> um, we're just going to correct your grammar all day. That's going to be the whole podcast. Today. <laughs> yeah, I need it. Into the history <laughs> and some of the, even some of the literature and mm-hmm. some things that, and, and I just kind of scratched the surface of that. And because, boy, it's, we, we need to understand some of this if we're going to understand the Bible. Yeah. I f- and I feel like sometimes it's, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about like ways to understand things in a little yeah. bit, but Sometimes when we don't understand something, we're like, let's just skip a couple yeah. chapters forward, and things get easier to understand in Matthew. Maybe I'll skip well, to it, there. And it's, you know, <clears throat> we, we started out in like the first five books of the Bible, and especially mm-hmm. Genesis, Exodus, they're, it's stories, you know, those right. kinds of things. So we like that. And then we get into Law and Numbers, you know, all right, let's skip that. And then it's Judges and Josh, you know, Joshua mm-hmm. and Judges. Okay, we get this. And now it's, you know, in First, Second Kings, and it's like one king after another. And some of the kings, I mean, the summary of their life is like three sentences. Yeah. Yep. And then you fast forward into like the prophets at the end. And it's like, what are these guys talking about? Who are they talking about? And I remember, you know, especially when I first kind of started to digest some of this parts of the Bible and going, I don't want to read this because I don't get it. I don't understand mm-hmm. it. And some of it's kind of weird. And how does it all get connected together and and confusing so yeah i think that's one of the i think you you hit it is just because it's confusing don't avoid it yeah no we <clears throat> I, have, I have a question and then they'll kind of bring us into the first kind of stuff we'll talk about but we spent so much more time in the the first part of yeah. the old testament and now because we're we're kind of we're, we're going through we're it. going yeah. through a much bigger part of the mm-hmm. of the Old Testament, kind of at you know mm-hmm. at, at a, a more rapid speed, and it and it probably is a part that gets passed over more. Yeah. Like I don't think a, you know when a lot of people are like, all right, I need to I need to jump back in the Word and spend my yeah. quiet time. You don't usually jump into like Second Kings nine, like let's yeah. see what's going on. That's not the place the where you Kingdom. start <laughs> l- learning yeah. to read your Bible. Yeah. So, uh, but why? Like, so why is that? Why are we going so much faster through this? And then also. Um, you know, you you mentioned some things that um, you know about Israel and Judah yeah. in, on the weekend teaching, but um, you know, dive into some things you weren't able to get to. Maybe. Well, I I think <clears throat> some of it, quite honestly, is just schedule. You know, trying to sure. fit all this yep. in, and because of that, I wanted to spend some more time at the beginning of the Bible because there's so much, especially Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. In those first six books or so, that's just foundational. Sure. And yeah. in order to understand, even when you get in the New Testament, in order to fully understand why Jesus came and what Jesus said, it connects all the way back to the beginning. Mm-hmm. And so these books that, you know, and this part of the history that is a huge part of the Old Testament, um, but is incredibly confusing, in order to understand it, you've got to understand kind of the backstory. Yeah. Of that, and and we talked a little bit about this weekend, and I talked, uh, and I gave a little bit of there are a few tools to help us understand this, and and explain why this part of the Bible is confusing. So when we talk about this part of the Bible, it's really it's First and Second Chronicles, First and Second Kings, which are were two big um, scrolls, and mm-hmm. they were too big to carry, so they broke them into two parts. So that's how we get <laughs> the first and second, and they really tell kind of the same, almost the same stories. Yep. Um, because they're they're little rundowns of the kingdoms, um, but so there's those histories, and they connect to the last part of the Old Testament, which is all of the prophets, mm-hmm. the major and minor yep. prophets. So we've got a. In order to understand this, and we talk, I just touched on it briefly over the weekend, and you can go and let, go back and listen to it. Is it's confusing because 
this covers a lot of territory. Yeah. You know, yep. it's about 500 years it covers. Mm -hmm. And some sometimes we get like two sentences that are summarizing 50 years, yeah. you know, something yep. like that. Um, second thing, when you, as you read the Bible, that sometimes is confusing, is make sure we understand that there's different types of literature in the Bible, and we'll get to that. Yep. It's not like coming to another book, and it's one book is one kind of literature. This yep. is a collection of books. And the other thing that sometimes is, sometimes is confusing is we, we remember how the Bible was put together. Because it's a collection of books, how, is, how were the books ordered in the Bible? Sure. And I touched on that this yep. weekend. If yep. they, if they aren't necessarily all ordered chronologically. They're mm -hmm. ordered a lot by type. And so they group by type. Yep. Like all the, almost all the prophets are together. Yep. And the books of history, for the most part, are together and those kinds of things. Um, so part of what, what I want to do, and, and you can kind of just throw questions at me with this, is to do a little bit, go a little bit deeper and... I don't want to call it an information or history dump. I know you love Ooh, history. Let's call it a yeah. history something. Let's yeah. just do that. <clears throat> um, but <clears throat> the purpose of this week and next week is to give some resources and some mm -hmm. information that will help you understand when you read this part of the Bible. Because this part of the Bible is important and gives far more depth and color and texture to the coming of Jesus, which we'll get mm -hmm. to in March. Yeah. And those resources are an application to Oklahoma Wesleyan University. You yeah. can find that at oakwoo.edu. <laughs> no, you don't oh, no, need sorry, a degree. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, I, I do think that, you know, like these seem like the parts of the Bible that like scholars yeah. study and, you know, people that study like biblical history. Well, they're the yeah. ones who are going to, you know, what do I do if I'm just, yeah. I mean, like for me personally, yeah, like I am a history nerd, so I do like to study these things, but a lot of people aren't. Yeah. And, and we need scholars, right? <clears throat> the Bible sure. tells us that it is living and active. There's mm -hmm. always something new we're, we're discovering, yeah. you know, as we dive into it. So we need people who spend their lives going deep into it and in the history. But the great news about when we're living up, uh, when we're living today is we have great, easy-to-access resources. Mm -hmm. The bad news is we have not-so-good, easy-to-access resources, <laughs> too, that can yep, really mess you up. So um, I just made a quick list of some things I would highly recommend. One of the resources, and I'm actually using this um, in my own personal daily quiet time and devotions, is The Bible Project. It's on mm -hmm. YouTube. Um, I actually have a have a, a reading plan through U version, and it and it combines my reading through the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, with some of the Bible Project videos oh, that break cool. it down because they've done a lot of the research. Mm -hmm. Research and it's really, really, really good. Cool. So you can just go to YouTube and and look Bible Project. Um, and I want to I put these links in in okay. the. <clears throat> Uh, the notes for this. Yep. So yeah, these the will be in the, in but the podcast or this, the video notes. This next resource is an amazing one. It's and it's timeline. It's all one word. Timeline dot bible history dot com. Timeline dot bible history dot com. And it's just it's this great fast visual history of the Bible. And so you click, you go to it, and it gives you kind of this overview timeline of the Bible, mm. but then you can click, like right now we're talking about the divided kingdoms. Yep. You click on it, and then it takes you, it, it's like drilling down in. Mm. And so then it shows you the break, break part of, here's what's happening in you know 590 BC, and you can see this visual of what prophets were there, what kings were happening. So as you're reading this, as you're reading that, you can click on um, this, and you can actually look Put it in search. So I'm reading about Ahab and Jezebel, you know, and it'll pull it up and it'll show you what prophets and what books of the Bible. Mm, that's really cool. Are right there. Um, that was just the, that's the timeline. Timeline. Bible, Bible History. Okay. Dot com. And nice. that's. I mean, you don't need to be a Bible scholar. It's just real easy and it's real trustworthy. Mm -hmm. That's a key there. Two of the things I would recommend, I, I use this a lot, blueletterbible.org. It's just a free free one. You can, if there's a verse you don't understand or want to go a little bit deeper on, you can go there and you can actually click on a word and it'll take you as deep as you want and it's real easy to understand. The other thing I recommend to people is if you've been, if you want to go deeper is get a good study Bible. You've talked about that a few uh, times. And we've talked about that before. Two I love best are the Life Application Bible or Zondervan Study Bible. It's just 
gives you some some great notes. Mm. And then the one resource I highly recommend is get in a good small group. Yeah. Get in a good small group. Because, I mean, I, I process it. I, I do this in the office, mm-hmm. you know. I'm wrestling with this, and I'll walk or walk around, or I'll say, "Here's what I'm wrestling with, and what I'm thinking. What do you guys think?" Mm-hmm. And as we work through this, it's not just what we think, but we all pull in what yeah. we've been studying, and, that, and you need <clears throat> you need those resources. So those are some good resources. Uh, now let's dive deeper into the Bible. You, I know, we this talked, part you want. We talked earlier today yeah. about the different types of literature, so I think we should we should touch on that first. With as as we're talking about the Old Testament. What books are what type? What, what does that mean on how I'm supposed to read it? How I'm supposed to study it? Yeah. That kind of stuff. And and <clears throat> most good study Bibles will tell you that you can you know some okay. of the resources I have will study that. But if if you've got like if if you're in a place right now where you can open like your paper Bible and look like at the table of contents, mm-hmm. I'll give you a fairly quickly here. Um, um, an overview of the Old Testament. You can kind of you know make brackets and study different different things. So the first five books are called the Torah. Torah means books of the law. Not all, not all the f- first five books contain like laws, right? right? So Genesis especially sets up the law, mm-hmm. and the first part of Exodus sets up the law. So it gives you the reason behind the law or God's guidelines, like we talked about. Um, and the Torah contains books of history and law. So that's the as you're reading those, you're reading those in that context. But even the books of the law are giving you history. So you mm-hmm. read those almost as historical books with some application. Um, and we, we've got other books of the law in the Old Testament. So Joshua, Judges, First, Second Samuel, First, Second Chronicles, First, Second Kings. Um, and like we talked about, most of those were actually one book, but the scroll was just too big for them to, to, <laughs> yeah. to carry. So that's how we get the first, second um, ones. There's some biographical history ones. And, mm-hmm. you know, we get confused as to the order. Ruth, um, Nehemiah, Ezra, and Esther are some biographical history once then we have the wisdom books which we talked about these a couple weeks ago yep. you have job which we really didn't talk, we really aren't spending any time in the series we need to probably spend a whole series on job because <laughs> yeah. it's this great old testament story and we don't know for sure whether it's a true story or an allegorical story scholars kind of defer mm-hmm. on that either way it doesn't to me it doesn't matter um, I believe it's a true story but the point of the story is, is to help us wrestle with the wisdom of what do we do when and how to explain when everything goes wrong mm-hmm. in life and where does God plan Psalms Proverbs Ecclesiastes Song of Songs some of those are poetry some are Proverbs um, some are stories with teaching. So we, we talked about those a few weeks ago. And then you have the prophetic books, and that's almost all of the rest of the books I haven't talked yeah. about. Um, and that's the back part of the Old Testament. Um, and these are broken up into major and minor prophets. Which, uh, Does that as, mean they're more important yeah, or less important? Yeah. It's, it's the major <clears throat> leagues and the minor. No, yeah, exactly. you know. no it's, it's just about size. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't mean they're more important prophets. Actually, one of the greatest prophets and listed as one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament is Elijah. Elijah never wrote a book. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got history about him, but he never wrote a book. So it's it's more about just the volume, the amount, or the quantity. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why they're called. But as you read those uh, major and minor prophets, you it, there's even a breakdown we'll get into. A little, you've got to pay attention to who they're talking to. Mm-hmm. And when, and we'll we'll talk about that yeah. because, um, as we talked about, even Sunday there was the Northern Kingdom, the Southern Kingdom after the Civil War that Rehoboam and Jeroboam were part of, um, and then there was the time of the exile, and then coming back from the exile. So there's this whole yeah. thing in the timeline that was happening. I remember being in college and like specifically in my Galatians class, and I. I remember, you know, there's this northern and southern Galatian theories about mm-hmm. w- which part of Galatia yeah. the church was in where he wrote it to. And it seemed like just, I was just like, why are we? Like, yeah. what a waste of time. But then, you know, as the professor got into it, he's like, 
you know, the way he says these things differs dramatically yeah. depending on which of these communities he would have been speaking to because he wouldn't have spoken to this community the same way he spoke to this. And it yeah. and it just blew my mind. I was, you know, 20 years old and I'd been reading the Bible since I could read and I had never, you know, that, that I just had never thought that way before. Like, I need to understand the people that, that mm -hmm. he's talking to and because just like how... When I, you know, I wouldn't speak to the people uh, that I grew up in the Twin Cities the same way I speak to people in Williston. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just a different culture here. And so there's just a different communication style. Down in Oklahoma, there was a different communication yeah. style. Like, it was a slower pace down there when I lived down there. And and so you just communicate things differently. And I just never thought about that. So then you same thing with the prophets. Like, mm -hmm. I think a lot of us just don't, don't even consider those things. That's where a, a study Bible or that timeline yeah. would really come in handy um, as you're going and, through. And that's part of what we're <clears throat> what we're learning with this whole series too is upper story, lower story, my story. Yeah, of learning to read our Bible, looking for those three things. Mm -hmm. So we read a story that we just go, okay, what in the world? And we've talked about some of the weird stories yeah. in the Bible. So where is God at work? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you've got to you've got to look for it, or you connect it to what else was happening here. Yeah, yeah. And then like you talked about the lower story. What was actually happening right then? Mm -hmm. You know, so like in, when the northern kingdom, when things are happening and you read some of the prophecies and then you dig into what was happening, there's this huge empire called the Assyrian Empire. And their capital city was Nineveh. And they were just considered to be unbeatable and mm -hmm. they were ruthless. I mean, the stuff that they did um, puts you know, our horror films today to shame. Yeah. I mean, we probably wouldn't put it on, on film. And you begin to understand the fear and why mm -hmm. people are going, we want to worship their guts because we're scared of them. And if we mm -hmm. worship their, you know, all of these things. And then you have, you've got to ask, why does it matter? God put that in there for a reason. Right. You know, and so that's why we, we dig into some of these things. Yeah. And that's part of why. So when I go to read, say, a, uh, a out of the book of Isaiah, and I'll grab my... Uh, my study Bible, mm -hmm. um, and I'll and at the beginning of a good study Bible, it'll give you a little bit of. It doesn't call it lower story; it'll call it history or yeah. context, but it'll give you a little bit. Of, here's what was happening mm -hmm. during this time, yeah. and then some of the stuff that you're going, "What does this matter?" You go, "Oh, now this makes yeah. sense," or they'll actually refer to another prophet because we don't think about so. Some of these prophets were alive at the same time. Yeah. And so it's like today, you know, we've got, you know, different pastors, different teachers in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And we're all teaching and, you know, and referring to some of the same books and some of these things that some of what was happening. Yeah. And so they're referring to each other, even though they're in different parts of the world at the time. Yeah. Well, let's dive into some of the history. We won't, we're not. We're gonna have to. This will be like a two-part podcast because okay. uh, which will work because it's a two-part yeah. kind of series or sermon. You know, la this last Sunday was part one. Next week's part two. So we'll we'll get to what we get to. We won't have a fifty-minute podcast yeah. today, and then we'll we'll pick up where we left off for next week. But I do think, um, and you, and then you just go yeah. and start diving into it. But you were talking about how confusing this part can be, and I I remember. The f first two time, first couple times, I should say, as a at least as a high school age or, mm -hmm. or college age, as I'm reading through Kings, you know, I'd read it as a kid, mm -hmm. but you just kind of whatever when you're little. Um, but it, like, it just gets confusing once that kingdom gets divided, and you're like, okay, he was the king of which kingdom, and like, yeah. who was over in that kingdom again, and and then it jumps to the other kingdom, and and it just it gets so confusing. So I think diving yeah. into the history here will help because I think a lot of that's part of what makes it confusing. For so people. I call this time period the time of the kings, mm -hmm. and what the time of the kings for me starts at the beginning of really First Samuel, as you look at your Bible, and goes to the <clears throat> end of Second Kings. And then the other books we have later in the Old Testament mm -hmm. fall into that time period and fall into there. So okay. the time of the king starts with the first king, Saul, mm -hmm. who we talked about. Second king was David. Third king was Solomon. And, and the, that's when we, that, those are the times we call the, the unified kingdom, yeah. where Israel didn't was last, one kingdom. Didn't last very long. <laughs> Three kings. Yep. The fourth king, so, um, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, you know, just you know, didn't yep. want to listen, didn't yep. want to listen to anybody but what he wanted, and he caused the civil war. And, that's, and this is really where it starts getting confusing, because he caused the civil war. And so Jeroboam, 
You know, you've got Jeroboam and Rehoboam, and yeah. we talked about More that. More confusion. <laughs> yeah. Are they related? No. <laughs> you know, um, takes 10 of the tribes, mm-hmm. and it's and they're in the northern part of Israel, even the northern part of, if you look at a map, a modern-day Israel, so north of Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And their capital um, becomes Samaria, although he creates two places of worship. Did I say Samaria? Yeah. Two places of worship in the far north, Dan, because he wanted everybody to go away from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And then kind of as a gate, Bethel, because that was a spiritual place dating all the way back to Abraham and and Jacob. And he sets up these these idol worship. Um, But so from then on, anytime you see, after Jeroboam takes it, anytime you see Israel... As a nation, mm-hmm. it's referring to the northern yep. kingdom and ten of the tribes. That's where it gets confusing. Yep. Rehoboam kept two of the tribes. And one of the cool and amazing things is it's the tribe of Judah because, you know, he's a descendant of David. Mm-hmm. And it's also the tribe that Saul um uh, Saul mm. was part of and led. Mm. You know, was, remember Saul was trying to kill David, yeah. but because of of Jonathan, because because of Mephibosheth, they decide that they are going to be part of the tribe of Judah and follow the descendants of the descendants of David. Mm-hmm. Levi kind of was back and forth yeah, a little as bit. The priests and yeah, yeah. And so when you see, as you read through, especially 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, when you see Judah, it's referring to the southern kingdom because mm-hmm. it doesn't always say northern kingdom, southern kingdom. So that that key alone will help you. Yep. From the time that it divided after Rehoboam to the time that both of those kingdoms were conquered. The northern kingdom was conquered first, and they were wiped out by Assyria. Um, and we never really hear from mm-hmm. those ten tribes again. We hear from them a little bit, actually, in the New Testament. The Samaritans are some of the very poor people that moved back in, but they were no longer of what the Jewish people considered pure Jewish blood and pure religion, uh, the Jewish religion. So there's they trace themselves back to the original mm-hmm. um, ten tribes. But the... Uh, Scholars today would say basically those ten tribes were wiped out. Yeah, they're often in time. called the lost tribes. The lost tribes. Yeah. Lots of super fun theories you can dive yeah. into on YouTube about. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of things. That's why I say the resources <laughs> yeah, matter. The, not good resources, you know? but they exist. And then <clears throat> the southern kingdom. It was eventually a little bit later conquered by Babylon, yeah. Nebuchadnezzar. Um, and they weren't all wiped out. They were actually taken away in two major groups. There were some minor yeah. groups, but two major groups. Daniel was part of the first group. Mm-hmm. And then one of the major major prophets, Ezekiel, was actually part of one of the later groups. And during this time, there were 19 kings of the northern kingdom, 19 kings of the southern kingdom. Real fascinating, 19 mm-hmm. of each. Yeah. Some led very short times some led like 50 years Mm -hmm. during that time not one king of the northern kingdom um followed god and they just got increasingly worse and worse and worse and worse with god sending prophet after prophet after prophet to beg them to come back five only five of the 19 in the southern kingdom attempted to follow God wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Um, None of them perfectly, but wholeheartedly. Um, And because of God's promise and God's covenant with David, they were sent into exile and then they eventually came back. So as you read through this, know who it's talking about Mm -hmm. and then know which prophets are talking talking to where. And probably next week we'll, we'll... dive into which prophets we're talking yeah. to where so you can understand is, that. So you said there were uh, how many kings of the northern 19 kingdom? 19 in the north and 19 in the south. Is there any sort of, you know, because obviously the southern yeah. kingdom lasted longer, but there were still just 19 of each. Is yeah. there any, you know, is there anything to that, that there were the same number of kings for both? There, or is it there, just a coincidence? You know, well, I don't think there are any coincidences with God. Sure. 
Um, and there's a lot of theories as to what that means, but the Bible okay. isn't crystal clear to say yeah. here's significance other than the fact it shows God had a hand in this. You yeah. know, even as things got darker and darker and darker, God had a hand in this. And 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 here maybe this is a good place for us to land okay. for for this week. Um, I think in that, and as you read the history, and and this is a good my story landing point. There's kind of two ways that. Um, people can go when it comes to their place in God's story. You mm-hmm. can kind of view yourself as and view God uh, as you can view yourself as being in history, and the river, the whole tide of human history, is constantly fighting against you. You know, and you're just trying to push your way up river and grab a few people and save them at the same same time. Mm-hmm. Or you can view it as um, the flow of human history. Um, God ultimately is determining where this is going to end up. And we as human beings and our sin have thrown rocks in <laughs> and caused rapids. But that's the worst we can do. Yeah. God ultimately is ri- writing the story. Is, is he causing the sin? No. Is he causing our choice? No. But all those are rocks and rapids mm-hmm. in the story that will ultimately lead everything to the restoration. And as you look at things like 19 kings, 19 kings, you go, God's got this. And Mm -hmm. even though the northern kingdom was messed up and got worse and worse and worse and worse, we turn to the New Testament. And one of the greatest interactions in the Gospel of John that Jesus had was with a woman at the well Mm -hmm. in the part of part of the country that everybody was writing off because those were the their descendants from the group of people that were lost. Mm-hmm. And Jesus saying that no one is beyond redemption. He's, the flow of his story is always mm-hmm. going to end up towards the restoration. And so we can choose to, to get caught in all this anxiety of how do we fight the world? How do we fight the world? Not that there isn't a spiritual battle. Right. Or we can choose to rest in you know, God's ultimately got this, mm. and he's just inviting me yeah. to ride the rapids with him. Mm. Um, and I think as we look at this, it, it changes our perspective. Yeah, for sure. Uh, maybe uh, our homework's always been just keep reading yep. along with us. Maybe maybe an extra piece of homework, maybe get a study Bible. Yeah. Um, you've been talking about it so much, um, and I don't have one, so I think yeah. I'm going—I love my Bible, but— mm-hmm. uh, I think maybe I'll pick up the Zondervan one to just yeah. to supplement it. And I have, and, and again, depends on where you're at in your spiritual walk. Sure. If you're just beginning, use the story because you're just starting yeah, with yep, us. Yeah, for sure. For me, I actually just bought, ordered a new Bible for me. It's a, it's a journal study Bible. It has oh, space cool. on the side because I I am always writing notes and stuff, oh, and so I just it. need can't I it. just need space yeah. to do that. Do you? This is yeah. aside from anything. We've we've wrapped up that teaching part. Yeah. Are you a person who like writes in your Bible? Like, like you, you know, you're reading. Sometimes. you're reading in Proverbs, and you know, you, yeah. you kind of hear something from God. Do you write it in your Bible? Yes and no. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I just have, can't, I just I have can't. different Bibles for different things. And I don't know why. Like, there's nothing like yeah. unbiblical about. It. I, honestly, I think it's just more of a book thing for me. Yeah. Like, I read any book like like it's precious material. Yeah. And my wife just picks it up and like cracks the binding, and yeah. just, I'm like, ah. Well, yeah. You know, I and I talked about this last weekend. You know, using soap, and you can yep. go back and listen to that acronym. But I told that. you I I've been trying to shower more and yeah. not smelling. <laughs> yeah, it's very hurtful. Um, you can bring it up on the podcast. Typically, I use. And I don't always write through that, but typically mm-hmm. uh, I've got like a journal or a notebook or something where yeah. I write some of that down. Um, but when I'm, that's part of where I'm getting a journal study Bible now is for mm-hmm. this next season. Yeah, um, I'm just going to write it right alongside. Mm. Now it's not the primary place I'm going to study. I've got sure. other resources, yeah. and I'll prob- that'll probably be a once a week thing where I go a little bit. Mm. Uh, more deeply into things. Cool. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, as always, we love when you are here on the Grow Podcast. Growth always starts with the next step. We say that almost every week. Yep. I think I've forgotten it a couple times. But um, so this was a great next step being here on the Grow Podcast. But make sure that you're putting these things into practice that we're learning from Pastor Mike every single week and uh, being there on the weekends with us. 
uh, mm-hmm. getting a small group if you're not in one. That was one of the main points yep. from today. And we just can't talk enough about being in a group and growing in community with other believers. So um, there's lots of groups that you can find. You can always go to our website and find them at newhopehere.com slash groups. So uh, we love you. We're so glad that you were here. We hope to see you next week. And yeah, that's all I got. Have a great week.